Hello and welcome to Spotlight. This is Art Cortinell reading Don Pierce's Bible Prophecy in today's World News. This is part 13 in our series. Israel, a potential trans-ocean passageway. Israel's government may also seek to leverage and align gas export policy to border foreign policy objectives by favouring a flexible export strategy that exploits the country's geographic position to service both Asia and Europe. Israel and Egypt have geographic advantage of relatively ready access to both Asia and Europe, therein allowing both to contemplate a dual continent approach to export. Adopting such a plan potentially could involve construction of LNG terminals anchored at either end of the Alat Ashkelon Pipeline Corporation, the EAPC structure, with terminals in Ashkelon, on the Mediterranean facing Europe, and in Ramat Yotam, near Elat, facing Asia, depending on the volume of resources discovered in the Levant Basin. Indeed, many Israeli officials view the importance of gas export in the context of Egypt's deterioration, not only in terms of hostility to Israel, but in terms of anti-Western tendencies and chaos, all of which raise questions about the viability of the Suez Canal as a major European-Asian transit route. These officials see a cross-Israel natural gas pipeline as an additional anchor for transforming Israel into a major trans-ocean passageway connecting the Mediterranean and Red Seas and reasserting the land of Israel as a major trade and transport route as an alternative to Suez. They view the development of the Elat area and Israel by extension as Europe's portal to Asia, thus enhancing the strategic value to, of Israel to the West. This expanding role of positioning Israel as the gateway to Asia from Europe will involve strategic challenges that will encourage Israel not only to reinforce its naval cooperation with the US and perhaps some European navies as well. It will also require Israel to establish and expand a Red Sea fleet with a blue water capability and significant convoy capabilities. This will become all the more important as US naval power recedes globally over the next decade. Jerusalem, Center for Public Affairs, 4th of April 2013. Is this an opening for Britain's new East of Suez strategy to help Israel? Russia eyeing Cyprus bases. Russia appears to be inching closer to gaining a long coveted military foothold in Cyprus as the future of their naval port in Syria looks increasingly shaky. The past fortnight has seen a surge in diplomatic activity between Nyi Scotia and Moscow over Russian requests for military use of the Andy Papandreou Air Base in Paphos in Limassol port. Cyprus Mail, the 30th of June 13. Several Russian warships have called in at Limassol in recent weeks. Russia helped Cyprus with a loan last year and this year renegotiated the payments to help Cyprus. There has long been a Russian interest in this island, not only as a holiday destination, but as a tax haven for rich Russians seeking to put their wealth out of reach of Russian tax authorities. Russia too has decided to re-establish a permanent Russian Mediterranean fleet, as it had in the Soviet era. The Navy's Mediterranean presence become permanent for the first time since the collapse of the Soviet Union more than two decades ago will be modelled on the Soviet fleet stationed in the region during the Cold War to balance US development, according to the Defence Ministry. The force will draw on Russia's Black Sea, Baltic and North Sea fleets, reported Bloomberg on the 6th of June 2013. The Russian Navy had been in long decline, but under Mr Putin, Russia is aiming to rebuild her navy. Gone are the days when a country needed a large quantity of vessels to ensure supremacy. Today's ships are much more sophisticated and one can carry the firepower of many World War II warships. 
Russia is aiming, however, at building a large number of boats. Each one takes several years construction. All blueprints for large warships left over from the Soviet era have been scrapped and the new design board commissioned to design new cruisers, destroyers and aircraft carriers along with full development of the carrier battle group concept which the Soviet Navy attempted but largely failed to achieve before the Soviet collapse. These naval plans are the most ambitious Russia has embarked on since the end of the Cold War and time will tell whether they can actually be carried out. A report from TheExaminer.com on the 23rd of March this year. The description in Daniel chapter 11 verse 40 is of the northern invader coming with many ships on the way to take Egypt and Israel, showing us that the latter day invader is to have a strong naval presence. Also, the more obscure prophecy of Balaam concludes with this vision of the war. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion, and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. Numbers 24 verse 19. He sees a time of trouble for the world. He looked up his parable, and said, Alas, who should live when God doeth this? Numbers 24 verse 23. Amalek, the great enemy of Israel, is to be destroyed. We read, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that of he that perish for ever. At this time, we read, ships shall come from the coast of Shittim, and shall afflict Ashur, and shall afflict Eber, and he also shall perish for ever. Numbers 24 verse 24. It would seem that Gog, as the latter day Amalekite, launches his attack against the Iraq region, Ashur, from Cyprus, which is Shittim, applying that he can take control of it, and from there traverse Syria to reach Iraq. He also comes against Israel, Eber. His object is to have dominion and to rule this region, but his plans will be cut short by the one whom God has appointed. The offspring promised of Jacob's line that has been promised the dominion by his heavenly father. Join us again next time for part 14, when we will look at Israel's plans for links to Cyprus. When we consider further how Bible prophecy is being fulfilled by World News Today.